middle of a car market crash for the last six months or so, and today we have some of the most up-to-date information from the month of January. So let's dig into it. Let's first take a look at Mannheim. According to Mannheim, wholesale used vehicle prices actually increased from December to January, and the used vehicle value index rose to 224.8. Though used car prices did rise from December to January, they are still down 12.8% from a year ago. MMR values or Mannheim Market Report values, which are general values of wholesale vehicles, saw an increase of 1.2% for the three-year-old index, which is saying that wholesale vehicles that are three years old increased in value by 1.2%. What's really interesting about this is that the increase that we saw with the used vehicle value index is actually pretty normal with seasonality. We typically do see that increase from December to January. And this makes total sense whenever you think about it because of the fact that whenever we're in December, we're in the holiday season, it's the end of year, end of quarter, and because of that, dealerships and car salesmen are much more likely to give you a deal. And because of this, car prices are typically lower in December and during the holidays and other parts of the year. And then by the time January comes rolling around, dealerships are done giving discounts, at least for the time being, and as a result, prices go back up, which is exactly what we saw. But while used vehicle prices saw a seasonally standard increase, MMR did not, and that 1.2% that we saw in the three-year-old index was actually above normal even with seasonality taken into account. MMR retention, which shows how much a car sold for versus how much the MMR value of that car actually was, was at 99.9% in the month of January, which means that vehicles that were sold during the month of January were actually sold pretty close to their MMR price. There weren't a ton of discounts that were given out. And while the car market as a whole did see an increase month over month, whenever we look at individual vehicle segments year over year, prices are still down quite a bit. Pickup trucks have declined 8.4%, compact cars have declined 10.7%, and vans have fallen 11.2%. But now let's take a look at car gurus. If we take a look at used vehicle prices over the last six to seven months, really since September of 2022, which is whenever we saw the car market really start to take a turn, you will see that cars have been significantly declining month over month. And that what we're experiencing right now in the month of January is sort of the first flatlining that we've seen over the last six months. Which again, from a seasonality perspective is pretty expected and it's definitely nothing to be concerned about. If we look at body styles of vehicles, you can see that all of these different styles have gone down year over year with the exception of the convertible and the coupe. But if we look at other vehicles like the sedan, hatchback, crossover, minivan, wagon, or even SUV, they are down quite a bit. If we look at 30 day data, you can see that all of these different segments are down. If we head over to makes, you can see a breakdown of every make of vehicle and how it's been trending, not only in the last year, but also in the last 90 days and 30 days. And you can see that the overwhelming trend here is that vehicles are down quite a bit. With the exception of high-end luxury cars and exotic cars, some of the cars that have been holding their value the best over the last year include the Jeep, Mazda, Hyundai, and Genesis. And while Mannheim and the Car Gurus Used Vehicle Value Index do a great job of giving us some of the key data points whenever it comes to valuing these vehicles and seeing how much the values have fallen, one of my favorite ways to gauge car prices is to actually look at vehicles that are currently for sale. I love looking at cars.com because I think it gives you a really good idea of what people are actually selling their cars for and at what price points they're selling them at. If we look at cars.com here, what I did was I basically applied filters that give you a very generic average vehicle, something that's a 2015 or newer, a max price of $50,000 and 60,000 miles or less. And I also narrowed it down to where it's only a great deal because let's face it, we're not trying to look for those poor or simply just good deal vehicles. And you can see right off the bat, as we start to scroll through, there are a number of cars that are two, three, four, or $5,000 under the average price for that vehicle. And you can also see that some cars are even price dropped, like this 2021 Hyundai Kona SE, this 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLE, as well as these two 2020 Ford F-150s that have 37,000 miles and 26,000 miles. If we go and take a look at these individual vehicle listings, you can also see the price trends of these vehicles as well. You can see that this car was listed 783 days ago. That is absolutely insane. And to be honest, based off of that number, I'm sort of surprised that it only has seen a $4,600 price reduction. In fact, you can see the full breakdown right here where it was initially raised by 2,000, 
then cut by 4,400 at the end of the year, and it's been cut by a few hundred dollars here and there every week or so ever since. If we scroll on over to the Mercedes-Benz GLE, you can actually see that a very similar occurrence happened with this car as well. This car has also been on the market for an extremely long period of time and has seen nearly $10,000 in total price reductions. And over the last nearly two years, it originally saw a price increase, but has been steadily declining ever since. And you guys know that we can't talk about price reductions without talking about Teslas. And right here we have a 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range. This car has been listed in on the market for 121 days and it has seen $13,327 in total price reductions. It was initially listed for nearly $46,000 back in October, and it has been consistently decreased in price over the last few months, bringing the current listing price to $31,773. These are just a handful of examples of the vehicles that I am seeing for sale, and this doesn't even represent a fraction of the cars that are available in the market, as well as the cars that are being marked down on a very consistent basis in order to be sold. And one last thing that I do want to look at is a study that was recently done by Cox Automotive. This doesn't really go into the financials of car buying, instead it goes more into the psychology of it. And this study found that over the last year, car buyers have become less loyal to car brands than they used to be. And this could in large part be because statistically, buyers are cross shopping more than they used to. So instead of somebody buying a Ford simply because of the fact that their old car was also a Ford and they liked that car, they're not having that same brand loyalty like many other car buyers used to have in the past. Instead, car buyers are actually doing a lot more research than they used to. They're trying out multiple brands. And because of that, statistically speaking, car buyers are much less likely to buy the same brand just because they've owned that brand in the past. This is of course really concerning for automakers because brand loyalty is something that automakers really cherish and it helps them grow year over year. And it's actually one of the reasons why brands like Tesla and Ford have been lowering the prices of their EVs. Both of these companies have cited brand loyalty as one of the reasons behind this decision, which I find really interesting. So studies are showing that brand loyalty is declining and automakers are definitely getting concerned about this and they're taking steps in order to improve it. And like I just mentioned, buyers are doing much more research online than they have historically, looking at third-party sites, new car sites, used car sites, and going to physical dealerships for their due diligence journey. This is another thing that is absolutely great news because it means that car buyers aren't relying on their dealerships and their salesmen to educate them on the car they're wanting to buy. Instead, they're using some of the hundreds of different resources that are available online to make an educated decision. And along with the same study, it shows that buyer satisfaction has decreased significantly over the last three years. And whenever you think about this, this actually makes a ton of sense because car buyers are becoming more and more educated. They're going into the car buying process knowing what they want to buy and how much they should roughly pay for that. And I feel as though the buyer's experience gets a little bit degraded whenever they go to the dealership and they're unhappy with their salesman. Maybe because they feel like they're being misled. Maybe they feel like the dealership experience is convoluted. Maybe they feel as though they're being taken advantage of. Whatever the actual reasons are, I think the fact that buyers are going into the car buying process, being more experienced and knowledgeable is absolutely attributing to the fact that they're leaving the experience much less satisfied. And even though online retailers like Carvana are struggling, in general, 80% of surveyed buyers are for buying a car entirely online, which is actually a 12% increase from this time last year. But there you guys have it, the most up-to-date information on the used car market. While prices did go up short-term, they are still trending downwards, which is exactly what we want. Remember, this is something I've said on this channel many times, but price declines within the car market are not linear. We cannot expect for it to be a straight shot downwards until prices hit their bottom. There are going to be some months where prices go up, some months where prices go down, and as long as the long-term trends are trending downwards, that is exactly what we want. And in my opinion, seeing the car prices rise in January compared to December is absolutely not unexpected. I think most industry experts would agree that it is seasonal. It is because the holidays were over and we are returning to our normal day-to-day -day schedule. And I think that come February or March, we will start to see these declines again. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.